guys and welcome back to my channel we're going to be talking about my late December uh, wrap up for what I read in the month of December which is only 10 books here it doesn't seem like a lot but it feels like a lot to me and it was accomplished and I loved every second of it so I guess we shall figure out what books I read and there's one that I checked out from the library that I don't actually have a physical copy of, but I have like the second book to it, so I will hold that up and I'll let you know more about that when we get to it. So, let's ready to dive back into December, shall we? Okay, okay, good. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and if you're new here welcome if you're not new welcome back as I was saying in the beginning of the clip let's go ahead and get into my 10 books that I read for the month of December and I was also in two different readathons as well in December I didn't get a whole lot done for the first one but I managed to get quite a few done for the other one I'll be right back because I just realized I don't have a book here that's on this list so that's why I like to keep track of what I read for certain months for that particular reason so we'll be right back and we're back Alrighty, let's go ahead and jump in to the first book that I completed for the month of December, which is Saga Volume 2. I just adore this world, and the art style is definitely stunning, and the storyline is... It's great, it's awesome, and then we have this cute little lion cat, like whenever you say something he'll be like, lying, or he'll like look at you and say, hmm, not telling the truth. <laughs> so he's, he, she is kind of funny, not, I think it's a girl, but I could be wrong, but the lion cat is awesome, and then we got your set of characters you got Alana and you got Marco and his family and then their little baby girl Hazel and then you got the half ghost that is also following Marco and Alana along with Hazel and it's just it's super sweet and cute and it's a fast and easy read as well and one of the guys, um, the Will, he adopts this little girl, this little girl right here. He adopts her and names her Sophie, which later do we find out that Sophie happens to apparently be his, I think, older or younger sister that comes and sees him after he's been hurt, I believe. And then also, just like a lot goes down into the second volume of Saga. It picks up right where it left off in volume one. And since I don't have volume three of Saga just yet, I will go ahead and mention that I did read that in the month of December. I think I did a vlog on it during Vlogmas. I enjoyed that. It also leaves off right after two, so I kind of like that. But the only small thing I don't like is that these comic books don't have numbers down at the bottom. So if you want to know exactly what page you're on, you have to like physically count it. I mean, I guess that's fine, but also I like the numbers on the bottom so I know what page I'm on, how far I got into. But with these, I can definitely fly through them within a few days and then I'd be done. That's how well I like Saga and how 
easy it is to read. I really need volume 4 now so I can read that because, you know, cliffhangers. But I also need to get 3, 4, and 5 so we'll get there eventually. I'm excited to find out what happens to Hazel and as she grows up and what happens to her parents, you know, all this and that little fun little details in the saga world. So if you haven't read Saga and if you like graphic novels and you like a quick and easy read and especially for like readathons, these are perfect just for that opportunity and I'd highly recommend if you're into that. There is also some graphic scenes so beware of going into that and it is an adult graphic novel book so keep that in mind before you pick up Saga as well. I should definitely have mentioned that first. Sorry, but I'm mentioning that now. Okay, we're gonna move on from our sagas. Do we really want to? No, but we got to. All right, the other book I'm gonna talk about, it's all the way on the bottom. Oh, oh, don't hit anything else. Book attacks are not fine. All right, the next book I picked up was Solo by Cami Alexander. It is a book of poetry and I really loved it. And we follow this guy named Blade. He is a writer and he, and in the audiobook, which I highly recommend if you're gonna read these books, definitely listen to the audiobook because when he sings his songs the narrator sings them and it's super cool and I loved every moment of it and the way that he told the book because it's like I said it's in a reverse so it's a poem book and I'm not a whole lot into poems but I like solo I need to get the second book and find out more about what happens to play but Basically, he finds out after his like 16th or 18th birthday, something like that, that he was adopted. And then he goes and tries to find his birth mother, and she's in this rundown kind of country, and he goes there to try to find her, and it's just his journey through that, through life, and he had a really bad breakup with his girlfriend after he just got her name tattooed on him and then he goes and finds out that she cheated on him like what but i felt bad for blade for that and it's just like all the emotional issues that he was going through it was really cute and really sweet and fast and another e easy read but i would highly recommend the audiobook for it because like i said the narrator sang any time that blade would start playing the guitar and it also plays the guitar while he's singing it in the audiobook, so I love that even more. So, yes, yes, and yes. Alright. The next book we are going to be talking about that I finally got around to, which is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Yes. So, technically in this one, we're following Jude after she's been exiled from the Feyland and gets thrown back into her original roots. And she has to go and live with her sister Vivian and her little brother who really doesn't want to be a prince, but he's acting a little bit spoiledish because he's not used to the human world. He's more of used to, you know, the Feyland because that's where he originally grew up. And can you blame the kid? He's like 10, 12, and it's just like, he doesn't want to. I might be saying he's older than what I think he is, but there's that. And then you got your Jude, and then you got your Terran. And she comes back and she said she had done something bad and that Jude has to go and take her place to try to tend to be her until they get what Taryn did bad resolved and she can come back. But as soon as she gets there, the keen Cardian knows it's Jude right off the bat because he knows Jude when he sees her, apparently. But their overall relationship, it's just, I need, we needed more Jude and Cardian. The little that we got wasn't enough for me. 
I don't know about the rest of the world, but like the ending, it, it kind of felt a little rushed, but it could have gone on a little longer. I know they're like really short books, but like it could have gone on a little longer, you know? There could have been like a little novella after this was over and after Cardian went through his changes that he had to go through and Jude had to go and get him back. Yeah, it could have been longer than 300 pages. Well, 305, but it could have been like a 400 page book and I would have been happy with what went down between more of Juden or Juden. Jude and Cardi. <laughs> wow, Jude and ignore that. But, like, yes. And then the cover underneath the dust jacket. If you know why there's a snake in the crown, and if you read The Queen of Nothing, I don't want to spoil too much what happens to Cardi after Jude gets back and gets to hang out with Cardi again, and they have their, hmm, moments. And, under the Feyland, uh, <laughs> but yes, it, if you like the Cruel Prince, you will definitely will enjoy the Queen of Nothing. It's just we needed more of Queen of Nothing, in my personal opinion. Like that, like put a crown down below if you agree. If we should have gotten more of Jude and Cardian, because we definitely did. Another book I forgot I finished is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Now, if you've been following my vlogs for a little bit last year, from like October to like November to like December, it took me a little while to read this. Not that it was bad, it wasn't. It was good. I like Victor. I didn't like Eli. Sorry, Eli fans. I'm a Victor Vale girl all the way. <laughs> haven't read Vengeful yet, but maybe this year I should because I need to finish off some the rest of the Ishwa books that I got that I haven't finished. That this year will be another year for the Ishwa, and I'm all about that. But you're following your two different boys. You're following Victor Vale, and then you're following Eli. I can't remember his first original last name, so we're just going to stick with Eli because Eli's... Ugh. Anyway, back to Vicious. Like I said, you're following those two boys, and one of them has a theory that he wants to do for, like, a science project, and it's what they call a near-death experience, like, where you almost stop your heart, and then, like, you're gone for a few minutes, and then you come back and, like, supposedly have powers. I wouldn't recommend trying that because it's a book world and it's fictional. And, I, like I said, I would not recommend trying that out to see if you get powers because that is not what we intend to do here. But overall, I like Victor and he has his friend Mitch and then he also finds this girl on the side of the road and little does he know, she hates his old college roommate and she has every right to be because that college roommate is evil. I mean, which one is more sinister, Eli or Victor? Or a little bit of both? Which one do you think? But, like I said, overall, it follows Victor and then it also follows Cindy and some of her chapter and I love her and she has this special unique power for when she touches someone if they're dead can slowly bring you back to life now that's definitely a unique power to have and then we got Victor where he can heal you with his kind of power but it's weird exactly on how it works like he can take the pain away from you or he can give it to you right back and make it ten times worse for you. So, I wouldn't cross Victor by any means. But the rest of the book, it was super cute, it was super sweet. And like I said, I'm not a fan of Eli. Like, Eli can go sit in a corner and just keep his thoughts to himself. Because that's how I feel about Eli. Like, bleh. 
sorry but not sorry but fishes definitely pick it up if you're interested and it's just uh, the supernatural part of it and like the elements and their theory that they test it's just it's amazing just check out dishes all right we are moving on oh these books really like to attack people what can i say okay okay <laughs> zen help <clears throat> all right don't want to reveal what the other books are just yet but we will reveal Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is the first book of hers that I've read and I really enjoyed it. We're following a girl named Elizabeth and she's trying to figure out why she's been taking off something. I'm trying to remember exactly what she was taking off. But, like, she was, like, in this house type of thing, and then, like, when she tried to go back for something that she knew she had left behind from the library thing, it said that she was no longer there, so she's, like, basically homeless, kicked off the street, until she comes back across this one person named Nathaniel, and her and him develop... A friendship and then that friendship basically later down the line turns into something else and also Nathaniel has this little demon guy that he likes to keep around and like he can agree to stay with you but he has to take like 10 years or so away of your life like is it really worth it to be protected by a demon to say yes go ahead take 10 years from me what's 10 years Later down the line, you're like, well, maybe I should have kept that 10 years to myself, you know? Because 10 years is a lot. And she's, Elizabeth is not the brightest character in this book. Whenever danger, like, neared, like, she, like, wanted, like, run after it to figure out more of it. Like, I like that a little bit, but also, like, if it has to do with evil, should you really be putting your toes in it and dancing towards it and try to solve the little mystery. Don't get me wrong, I liked it. I'm not trying to bash on it. But, like, uh, at the end of the book, uh, when she figures out how to bring the demon back to life when they couldn't finally figure it out, it was like, what? Go this bit, go this bit, go this bit. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> it's just basically her and Nathaniel on this adventure along with this little demon friend that they have. And it has to do with like a library and this one guy is like evil, which is evil than the villain or the, the demon that's hanging around Elizabeth and Nathaniel, uh, which his name is Silas, I believe. But... It's just, it's really good, and I would highly recommend you guys checking out Sorcery of Thorns. I'm sorry that wasn't the best description of the book, but um, overall, I really, really enjoyed it. So don't get me wrong by uh, saying the little things about it in this book, but I think you'll actually like it once you get around to reading this book. Please, please do. As I'm hugging it. Yeah. We're gonna move on from Sorcery of Thorns and pick up the Thousand Floor. I've had this book on my shelves for ages. Finally got around to reading it and I loved it. And I can't wait to get into the next two books. And it is by Catherine McGee. And like I said, it's called The Thousand Floor. And they're in this building, which like like it said, it's the name of the title. It has that many floors in this building, which is crazy. 
because I would not want to be on the very top four because me and heights do not mix, so I would not want to be on top of that floor. But we're following one, two, three, four, five different characters, and they all have like a different stories, and they all live on different certain floors. And then there's this one character who's a flawless and believes a secret addition to a drug she never should have tried and a boy she never should have touched. She has a lot of issues and the drug thing she has issues with as well. And towards the end of this book, at a party, something happens to one of their friends and this girl is drugged. If she wasn't drugged up, she would have stopped to listen to more of this girl's story before she went and something bad happened to her, obviously. But none of these kids are going to confess to what the something bad has happened because she's trying to keep it a secret and under wraps. So I'm hoping in the second book it catches up to this girl and the friends that shouldn't have kept their mouth shut about the their friend's death because someone is definitely gonna figure it out and I can't wait for that that girl to figure out exactly what happened to her her girlfriend and, she, and it's just like <laughs> yes get him <laughs> overall there was another person named what and he is a secret tech genius with a secret he knows everything about everyone but when he's hired to spy on an upper floor girl he finds himself caught in a complicated web of lies and then we have this girl named Avery Fuller she has a foster care brother and the relationship between those two is kind of went out of control and it was like cringy and I'm like it's like I kind of like it but like at the same time I'm like I'm not feeling this like no just he's supposed to be your foster brother not your lover like what is this some twisted game of thrones going on in here I don't know, but that's what it felt like to me between those two characters, and I was like, mm -hmm. Anyway, definitely moving on from the Thousand Floor, we are now going to talk about one of my favorite thrillers that I read in December, which is... The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I listened to this on audio, and it's about this nanny who took this job with these kids in this beautiful house, and it sounds too good to be true, because they've been through nannies, and this new nanny comes in, and, like, it gets spooky. And in the middle of the night, there's this floor above her, and every time I heard that sound go off in the audiobook, I'm like... Why that noise? Of all noises, why the creak? Like, that's exactly kind of how the narrator did it, and then it was just like, is it creaking over? <laughs> I want it to be over. But, like, it, it has you on the edge of the seat as she's writing to this lawyer while she's in jail after one of the kids got killed. And they think that she done killed the little girl, and, like, you have to figure out exactly what all she went through to figure out if she's innocent, did she do it, did she not do it. Later do we find out why she exactly took this nanny position, and no knowing full well that she should have mentioned some secrets that she kept from the get-go to her boss and to the other boss but she kept it all under wraps but the kids are smart and they kind of figured out her little secrets but they didn't figure out the complete secrets 
So there's definitely that. It's twists and turns and keeps you on the edge of your seat and a little creak, creak noises get you every single time. At least it did me and I'm like, nope, fast forward. But <laughs> overall, I really enjoyed it. And if you like a thriller book and if you haven't picked up The Turn of the Key yet, I'd highly recommend picking it up and also picking it up on audio and following along because it's it's an adventure and it's a grand time and you'll like it. You'll keep guessing what exactly happened to this little girl and why she was dead and who did it. Was it the nanny? Was it not the nanny? Was it the handyman that was along with the family? Did he maybe do something to hurt this little child? I guess you're gonna have to read the turn of the key to find out your answers as well. Because I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna give a wrap up on it, but I'm not gonna tell you who killed it. Or, ki or who killed her. Was it the nanny? I don't know. It was somebody in that house. But you're just gonna have to read it to find out all its glory secrets of the turn of the key. Yes. <laughs> All right, and then the next book we are going to be talking about is A Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. I'm finally getting around to the Clockwork series and it's been a long time coming. I've also had these books on my shelves forever and the Shadowhunter series is a very big, large collection. I have every single book. Have I read every single book? No, not quite, but I'm getting there. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six books left that I need to read before Chain of Gold come out, so we'll get to that eventually. But back to A Clockwork Prince. Now, in this one, we do have a love triangle. I'm kind of there for it and kind of not, but don't get me wrong, I do like Will Herondale. He definitely reminds me a little bit of Jace Herondale, but Will, there was no harming in the book of, in the filming of this book. Anyway, uh, with Will, he thinks he has this curse for saying if anyone loves him, they'll like die. Like That's really sad and that's why he hasn't technically let really anybody in except for Jim, but yet he didn't tell Jim about the curse, but he went and told Tessa Gray about his curse. And now Tessa Gray, she is a different kind of a warlock, and I low-key like her. I, like I said, the low triangle between Tessa, Jim, and Will I'm glad at the end that she ended up choosing who she did because I loved her and him together. It was just a bittersweet. And then I was just like, yes, him, yes. Not saying if she chose Jim or if she chose Will, but if you've read this series, you know who exactly who I'm talking about and who she picks. And he, and also Jim has this cat name church this is where the cat comes into the series and like when i read that in the first book i was like oh my god church <laughs> little did i know <laughs> your girl was correct and it's just oh it's bittersweet and like with tessa gray she is still on the edge of not trusting her brother after the first book and can't you blame her her brother went and did her dirty and he, at the end of the book, he kind of gets what's coming to him, and she's still kind of bittersweet and sad about it, but she's got Jim, she's got Will, she's got the people at the London Institute who is on her side, except for the one girl who really doesn't want to be a shadow hunter, but she is a shadow hunter, but she's claiming that she's not, and she drives me insane. If you know what character I'm talking about, then you'll know. But, like, ugh. She's the only one I really don't care for. But I like the rest of them. I, it's, it's a 
adorable. I love this world so, so much. And just, uh, yes. Moving on from Clockwork Friends. Maybe. I can't get it to go back in my spot. Get in the spot. Okay. The final and last book we are going to be talking about is da -da 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 -da, Red Queen. Finally got around to this book as well, and it is by Victoria Aviard. Now, there's two different colors in this world. You're either a red, where you don't have any superpowers, and you don't get much money, and you have to, like, basically survive off the land and exactly what you can get. Or, if you're a silver, you're high, or you're mighty, you have these powers that you learn to control when you're at the castle you fight in like an arena it's kind of like the hunger games except for like you said you're either a red or you're a silver red doesn't have any powers technically and then there's silver that does have powers but in this rare case mare barrow she was red she bleeds red but later does she know after she met the prince that she didn't know was a prince that came to help her so she didn't have to steal anymore to survive for her and her family after things went down she kind of finds out that she should have been silver and not red so there's that little fun fact and she has to keep it a secret and then she gets thrown into secretly marrying maven now, Maven, I liked him at the start until the towards, like, the very end when he turned wicked as his mother and wicked he shall be. And between Maven and his brother, the prince, who will get to be the king or should have been the king that wasn't, I'm trying to figure out what his name was. And then you also have the Reds, Rebels, Cal. Okay, between Cal and Maven, they pick at each other. Like, they like each other, but, like, Maven secretly hates Cal because he's the perfect prince. He does better at this than I do. It's like this and that, like the pros and the cons. It's just like a kid. It's just like chill. I know he's your older brother, but, like... You can't keep comparing yourself to something that you're not. So I can see why he got wicked in the way that he did. Because his mother, the queen, which is Cal's stepmom. Oh, she was a headache. Very much so. <laughs> but overall, I like Mare Barrow. She didn't really need to rely on most people but herself. And she was secretly a part of the Red Rebels, and secretly Maven was too for a while. But they have this saying in the book, everyone is your enemy or something like that. Or no, not... Anyway, and the thing, the power that Mare can do, she is the Lightning Girl, and she gets this nickname called the Lightning Girl, and she absolutely hates it, but she can control lightning, and that's kind of pretty cool if you ask me. I mean, I don't know if I want to control that, but it, you know, mess with me. I got my lightning, lightning. Anyway... There you guys have it. Those were my 10 books that I read for the month of December. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get emails every time I post. And 
Hope you guys are having a good day or night and get some unexpected reading in because of course, why not? And I will see you guys in my new video. Goodbye!